On Wednesday, June 26, the United States Supreme Court decided United States versus Windsor. And what the court decided in Windsor is that Section 3 of the Defense of Marriage Act violated the Constitution. In order to explain how the court reached that result, it's a little easier to explain what the court didn't say. The court didn't say that Congress had no authority to define marriage as between a man and a woman. The court didn't say that gay and lesbian people are a suspect class and therefore any legislation that negatively impacts gay and lesbians are, is going to be viewed with extra scrutiny. And the court did not say that marriage, the right to same-sex marriage, is a fundamental right under the Constitution. But the court did say that all of those issues were implicated in Section 3 of DOMA, that Congress, by defining marriage as between a man and a woman for federal purposes in DOMA, was implicating all of those constitutional concerns because it was defining marital status in a way that was very inconsistent with the way that Congress has traditionally treated marriage, which is to allow states to determine marital status. It was clearly creating a regime that had a disparate impact on gay and lesbian married people as opposed to straight married people. And it was altering the institution of marriage by suggesting that for some people, they could be married for state purposes, but not for federal purposes. And so by sort of throwing all of those doctrines together, Justice Kennedy's majority opinion said, Section 3 of DOMA is constitutionally suspect, it's unconstitutional, and from now on, the federal government should honor state determines of marital status, whether that marital status is afforded to same-sex couples or to straight couples. So the ramifications of that result um, are pretty clearly that we will now have a sort of patchwork pattern of marriage recognition in this country. A couple, for instance, that is um, of the same sex and married in Iowa will be treated as married for state purposes and federal purposes as long as they stay in Iowa. What is up in the air right now is what happens if that couple moves to Oklahoma? Oklahoma probably is not gonna honor same-sex marriage for some time. Will the federal government treat that couple that was married in Iowa as married or not married? What if that couple moves to Illinois? Illinois recognizes civil unions, but doesn't yet recognize marriage. What is federal policy with regard to that couple and marriage going to be? The answer to that question is not as hard as some people um, seem to be making it. The answer to that question is that federal courts and the federal government will likely come up with choice of law rules that will determine what federal policy will be. So that, for instance, the federal government will decide for social security purposes that we will use the law of domicile, which is to say the law of where the couple resides, to figure out whether or not they should be married for federal purposes. So if the couple moves to Oklahoma and they live in Oklahoma and Oklahoma doesn't honor same-sex marriage, then they won't be treated as married for federal purposes. Or courts could decide um, the federal government decides that they will use the place of celebration where the couple actually got married to determine federal marital status. I and mean, if the couple got married in Iowa and moved to Oklahoma, the place of celebration was Iowa, and then they will be treated as married for federal purposes. In fact, federal agencies and federal courts have been using those choice of law rules for years. They use them in a variety of different contexts. They use them to to figure out whether to recognize common law marriages. They use them to figure out whether to recognize underage marriages. And until the court decided Loving v. Virginia in 1967, they used them to figure out whether the federal government would honor interracial marriages. So we're now in the situation where in order to figure out whether a same-sex couple that moves from a state that honors marriage to one that doesn't. We just have to look at the choice of law rules that the federal government will apply in order to figure out whether they're married for federal purposes.